All right, everybody. So I mentioned my worst financial decision of my life, uh, and that's right next to me. And after in a couple hours, it's no longer going to be mine. But I'll take you for a final walkthrough and show you what it was. That's Ricky. You may recognize Ricky from such things as uh, Dominic does Dallas. No, maybe not. Um, anyway, here's the apartment. And it's nice, not gonna lie. It's, uh, it's an incredibly nice place. And what sold it for me was the view. Now, that's Manhattan. I mean, look, obviously, like Empire State Building. Now, if you go right there, let's see if I can get it. Oh, Statue of Liberty, right there. It's Jersey City on your right. Not a bad zoom, not gonna lie. But oh, there's there's Ricky. There's Ricky. Gonna have to blur that one. Gonna have to blur that one. Last ass that I'm gonna see in this apartment. Um, full size washer dryer. Large bathroom. That's one thing. Like you don't get this in New York. You don't get big bathrooms. I got the. Uh, the bubble tub, you, you see the little things down there? Air. So instead of the uh, jacuzzi tub, that's a, a light therapy or something like that. It changes the lights. 50 gallon, 50, 75, it's probably a 50 gallon. Hot water heater. This was the master bedroom. Closet, I went through the uh, trouble of doing the like sort of California closet in here. So I had that side and my wife had from like here all the way over here and over here and over here. But um, bed was here. So every day you just look outside and boom, there's Manhattan. It was really nice. Now, lastly, I mean, this is, I didn't have the bench out here. I had a little table here. I used to work out here on the patios. I lived here for about five years. But I mean, this sort of made it all worth it. And honestly, if the water was blue, I would never have sold this place. And just as blue as the glass down there, which didn't, that place didn't exist. The, the parking structure did, but that place didn't exist when I lived here. But this property itself is never going to be obstructed. So you will always have this view. That right there is essentially why I bought this place. And we're gonna say goodbye to it, but um, I'll get to the, uh, I'll get to the, the monetary aspect of it in a minute and tell you why it was a bad decision. But ultimately, if you're not planning on living somewhere for at least like 15 years, and not, not planning, but realistically expecting to live somewhere for 15 years, you shouldn't do it. All right, so that's that. Last time I'm seeing my apartment, uh, could be now, could be a couple hours, whatever it is, uh, pretty soon I will not be allowed in there because it's no longer mine. And as I was saying in the apartment, that was not my finest moment as far as spending money. I made the mistake of uh, listening to my parents, which the older generations are all about, don't pay somebody else's mortgage. Definitely, definitely, definitely like buy. And that was a bad move, especially it's a one bedroom apartment. I was dating uh, my then girlfriend, which I expected to become my fiance and then ultimately my wife. So I knew we were gonna start a life and have kids and everything like that. And then within five or six years, buying that apartment was a mistake. Now, why do I say it was a mistake? Well, ultimately, when I got the apartment, I could have rented it for, let's just, let's just say I'm renting it 10 years ago for what I'm paying today, 2250, 2300 bucks a month. When I had the mortgage, uh, the rates, good rates back then were like eight and a half percent back in 06 when I got it. I bought the, the apartment in October of 06. I paid $565,000. And now let's just say 11 and a half years later, I sold it for 518. That's right there, a, a sort of a kick in the dick. Now, that's not indicative of the housing market. It never went below 500, but it just, it didn't really move. 
It's the best one bedroom apartment in the, in the building. It's right near the elevators, right near the garbage chute. It's top floor, unobstructed view forever. So it's got all the right check marks, but up and down what they call the Gold Coast here is new buildings and new developments going up all over the place. So I will always have an unobstructed view, but I'm not gonna have, at least not at this point in time, the amenities of these new facilities. So I'm always gonna be battling against that, which is why the the value of it or the price of it has sort of stagnated for the last decade. And ultimately what ended up happening was I've, I've essentially paid a lot more money than I should have for the same value. When I say that, when I bought it, the mortgage sucked. I'm gonna call out Bank of America because they had a very shitty mortgage on it from day one. Um, and you know, it may have not even been Bank of America to start. I don't know, it's traded hands so many times. I don't know who, held, who holds the paper now, who held the paper then. But ultimately, um, I was paying like $4,600 a month to own that apartment on my mortgage. Now that's $4,600 a month for the same experience had I rented, maybe not that apartment, but the same apartment, because if somebody was selling it, there's no guarantee they would rent it. So right there, I'm paying an extra 2,000 and change every month for the same apartment, right? The only way that works is if I'm putting 2,000 a month away in equity. Otherwise, it's sort of a waste of money. I was not putting 2,000 a month in, in equity away because I had a mortgage for the full value. I had a 100% mortgage on the property. So I was probably paying $3,100 a month in interest, which is more in interest than rent would have even cost. So time goes on. Uh, I can't find a place to live, so I, I, rent in the, I rented the house that you've seen me in for the past couple of years, and I ended up renting out my apartment. And I wanted to at least rent it furnished at first, because renting it furnished, you know what, good deal, I'll rent it furnished, what does that get me? Gets me nothing, because the first year I left it empty because nobody wanted it furnished for $2,800. So finally I ended up renting it for $2,300 unfurnished to somebody. So it was empty for an entire year. Now I spent, I mean, whatever, uh, even say $3,700 every month on the mortgage because I, I was able to modify the mortgage. That's a whole nother video. But I went through the process of modifying the mortgage, brought the mortgage down, and I was still losing money. Let's just say it was $3,500 a year. Right there, I'm wasting $42,000 a year for an empty apartment. Then I got my tenant in at $2,300 a month. Now I am paying $1,200 a month difference between the mortgage and the rent. Plus I have the maintenance fees on the property because the taxes are wrapped in, in the mortgage. The maintenance fees on the property, another $400. So right there, I mean, you add it up, it's whatever, what did I say? It was uh, 2,300 to 3,700, so $1,400. So it was costing me $1,800 a month to rent it out to somebody. Now, that would be plausible because you know what? Somebody's paying the bulk of my mortgage. It would be plausible long-term if I was building a reasonable, uh, a reasonable amount of equity every month. If I was gaining $1,500 a month, $1,800, $2,000 a month in, um, in principal, I've got somebody paying all my interest, I pay the principal. Doesn't work like that. Even to date, last year, I was, uh, like the last couple of years, it's, it's literally like it changes by like a couple of dollars every month. I'm at like $700 a month in principal. And so they're paying most of my interest uh, and taxes. I'm paying the rest of the interest in taxes and maintenance, and it's costing me over $1,000 a month to build $700 in equity. Time to let it go. It was a terrible decision. Everybody that says buy instead of rent, it really depends on the property. It's not even really a good investment property unless it's worth a million dollars down the road, which it may be in, in 20 years. But for a holding period of 11 years, I mean, to say on average I wasted, even let's just assume there was always a tenant in it and I didn't have to pay that one year of the 42,000 to keep it empty, um, losing, so first off, the first five years I was there, I was paying $2,000 a month more to live there on my mortgage than I would have to rent. So right there, that's uh, $24,000 a year for five years, it's $125,000 that I now paid more than I would have cost to rent in the first five years. The next year it was empty, so that was another 42, it's 167,000. And then the next five or six years, I don't know if I'm doing the math, the next five years after that, um, it cost me about 20,000. So this, this place, all in all, has cost me 
$260,000, more than it would have cost me for the same exact experience, the same living in the same, same or similar apartment and not owning that. And that's not even uh, factoring in the money I've lost selling it because I bought it for five sixty five. I'm getting some cash back out of it, but I bought it for five sixty five, sold it for five eighteen. I got a higher offer, but this was a cash buyer. But five eighteen, that's another um let's just call it forty thousand dollars. So now we're at what two sixty, that's three hundred thousand dollars I lost. And the last kick in the nuts is the money that's got to go to the real estate commission, which is 5% on this deal. That's another $25,000. So add it all up, Jesus freaking Christmas, it cost me well over $300,000 in cash lost to have this property. I mean, it was really nice and it's a great view, but the single worst financial move of my life, should have never done it. You got to think twice when you get a mortgage. Um, if you're not going to be somewhere for a considerable amount of time, you got to look at what your alternative cost would be to rent. And a lot of the times if I rented, just imagine the same money. If I rented for the first five years, stashed $2,000 a year, a month away, even paid taxes on it. Because everybody that wants to, well, I get to write off my tax. That's very dumb. It's a very dumb way to look at things. If you, if I took that $2,000 a month and even say it was tax, so I took 1500 of that 2000 a month after tax and invested that for five years, be sitting on a positive cash pile instead of a giant negative cash pile for the same experience. If that was say, even if it, if I took that 2000 and put it into a retirement account that was tax deferred or tax uh, exempt, it's just a completely different story. So long story short, do the math, talk to somebody who's been through it. Don't just assume buying is the right thing to do because you know what, in my instance, to have to live in this apartment, to have that apartment, it cost me over, I'll just say ballpark $350,000. Jimbo posted the real number by adding all this up, but $350,000 in real cash, that's not my total cost that it's, it cost me to be there because remember, I was offset. The money that's gone into this place was probably the value of the home. Like $565,000 was the purchase price. I've probably, and you gotta back out taxes and everything, but just say I've put $500,000 in cash against it and my net loss at the end of the day is over $300,000. That's a giant, giant, giant kick in the nuts um, for for a nice view. And it was a really nice view. It was, it was essentially a $300,000 view. More, because then I paid the, the money. You know what, it just, it's now hurting my head to think about it. But just please use me as, as an example. If you know somebody who's thinking about buying instead of renting and thinking that that's the way to go because their parents said never pay somebody else's mortgage, you may be better off because the people that were paying my mortgage were doing much better than if they mortgaged the place themselves. So there's different markets out there, but these hot markets, San Francisco, um, San Francisco, Miami, New York, Chicago, all the big cities, there's a good chance you're gonna be looking at much better use of your money. Because your money, that's thats the finite amount right there. That's the stuff that you should be using it to the best of your abilities until you retire. I uh, look, that's a 599 GTO. That, uh, that car is worth, uh, no, not, uh, there's another 599 GTO. That was a, uh, what's the other one? The newer one. F12. The F12 TDF. That's a $1.25 million car. Just driving the other way. Not even being like, yo, Rob Ferretti, is that him driving a brand new 57 mile? F-250? Probably not. I looked at him not the other way around. But take my advice. Uh, be smart with your money because if you're smart with your money now, it'll pay off. Ugh, it's so cheesy, but it'll pay off dividends later. I did, didn't mean for it to come out that cheesy, but that's the truth. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the view and just give me like, if you, if everybody watching this watches this video a million times each, I may be able to recoup my loss on the apartment. But alas, I don't think that's in the cards. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.